Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's go. Um, quick thing. Don't forget, Sunday night again, 11.59 p.m. Your assignments are due. Okay, hang on. All right. So, Sunday night again, 11.59. So, I want to continue today with the theme of um, the, 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 the different ways in which we converge and the different, in which we're similar and the different ways in which we're different. And, uh, and so I want to do something, and I did this one time a long time ago, and it was really fascinating, and, and I want to do it again. So what I'd like to do is take, take things off your, I need you to be able to stand up or sit down at different points, okay? Um, Okay, so one of the things one of the things that happens when we talk about race relations and ethnic and cultural relations is that we end up focusing on differences, right? Because what we're doing is we're highlighting the unique characteristics and qualities of particular groups. And so that means we're highlighting differences. That's just kind of the nature of how this thing works. And so the what you want to know are just like you know we started the semester just looking at even our physical features and you know what are some of the reasons that we have so many different physical features and some of us share features and other features we don't share and this sort of thing right and but the truth of the matter is we're mostly the same so even genetically kind of nature plays a trick on us right we're 99.99 percent the same in terms of our genetic admixture, but the 0.01% that accounts for a lot of our external features and so on, that, that is the stuff that we see. So when we look at one another, when I look at someone that's from of a, that looks physically very different from me, I'm not thinking 99.99% were the same. What I'm seeing, what I'm seeing are the differences. So I'm thinking, whoa, genetically speaking, there are all these differences between us, but the fact of the matter is, genetically speaking, we're really, really almost identical. It's just a, some of our genes, and so this is the way that nature plays a trick. And so it gets us to think that we're, there are all these kind of differences, when in fact they're not there. So when we teach a class something like race relations, um, what goes on is that I come in here and I start talking about all the different groups and the different characteristics and different histories and different this and different that and then we imagine that we're really all very very different in different parts of the world we our cultures are radically different from one another and this sort of thing but in fact really honestly most of us are very very similar and most of our cultures overlap a great deal in fact there are relatively small portions of our cultures that don't overlap and human beings really i i don't know i i can certainly say this as a sociologist because I I've traveled a lot and I've lived abroad a lot and what I encounter all the time is that people are the same not exactly the same but very much and mostly the same so what I want to do in this class right now is focus is look at some things some pieces of our lives sociological pieces of our lives and I want to see who shares in these pieces and the way we're going to share is you're going to stand up when I say something, if this applies to you, okay? And then I want to just really kind of look around the room and see who's standing and who's not standing. So, first one. Stand up 
If you have an adopted family member in your immediate family, including yourself, Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yep. So look around. Look, look around the room. At the sim- Again, the similarities. There are people from lots of different ancestries who are standing. So you share this. This is a thing you share. Right? Like if you're in your discussion groups and sometimes people will say, oh, you can sit down now. You, you, oh, my, my group. Like we're all the same or whatever. No, you're not the same. We don't have much diversity in my group. Look, just right here is so much diversity just on that one question. Let's do this. Stand if you've had your heart broken. (laughs) Yeah. All right. All right. Yo, man. Oh, dog. Come on, man. All right. Have a seat. Jeez. All right, man, ready? Stand. Here's one. Stand if you've never been to a Penn State football game. All right. Yeah, a lot of people. All right. All right. Okay. Yo, once again, cross-section of the class. Next one. Stand if you don't drink. Yeah. Yo, by the way, just, just as a point, yo, just as a point right here, let me just, um, yo, let me, let me just point something out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I just want to point something out. Look around the room. There is definitively a disproportionate number of black and brown people standing. Just want to say that. All right, have a seat. Um, Stand if you are not involved in THON in any way. Yeah. Okay. So, by the way, one, one thing that I'm noticing right now is right here, I, what, I'm in, what I'm seeing just from what I can see and from what I know of lots of you, a disproportionate number of international students for sure. Okay, have a seat. Which might say something about THON and about the way in which people get involved in THON. Okay, here's one. Stand if 9-11 directly impacted your family. a lot of people. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, Stand if you were bullied at some point growing up. Oh, damn, dogs. Seriously? Okay. All right. Hang on. Okay. That's, yeah, that's far too many people. Okay. Here, we're going to do I want to do this. Hang on. Stay stand. You, everybody's sick except, yo, hang on, listen. Except the people who were really, really harshly bullied. I mean, like, hardcore bullied. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, have a seat. Stand. So once again, look at look at the, all the commonality and similarity here. Stand. If you have had a parent die at some point in your life, thus far. I would be standing for that one also. Okay, thanks. Um, 
we're like the, those of us, you know, when you have a parent die when you're a child, like it's, it's a tribe, you know, they're like, um, stand if you have w at least one parent who is lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transsexual. Two. One, two. Cool. All right, thanks. Um, stand if you have a brother or a sister who is a brother or a sister who is LGBT. Wow. It's, look, look, look at how it's just a lot of people, y'all, right? Okay, thanks. Um, Stand if you have turned away from the religion of your family. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of people. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, here's one. Stand. If you currently have two or more jobs or you work full time. I don't mean in the summer, I mean currently. That's a lot of people. Okay. Once again, look, you don't just see the, the connections. Okay. Um, stand if you feel like you don't really belong at Penn State. That's a tribe. You all are a unique tribe. All right, thanks. Uh, stand if you currently or very recently, let's say have, or in the very near future are going to, have at least one parent who is unemployed and seeking work. Again, a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, here's just kind of a curi an interesting one. Stand. If you have walked at some point in your time at Penn State, if you have walked through the doors of Old Main. All right, thanks. It's a lot of you, y'all. Okay, here's one. I, I, I hope a lot of you stand for this one, actually. Stand if you've personally spoken with Gary, the Willard preacher. <laughs> y'all, I don't mean yelled at him. I mean spoken with him. All right, cool. Cool. All right, thanks. Um, okay, you ready? Um, stand if you've hooked up with someone of a different race or ancestry. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's a lot of people. So, all right, so if we could just... By the end of the semester, if we could get everybody standing. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Mm. Uh, okay, here's one. Uh, this is a little more. Stand if you are estranged from or, or cut off from at least one parent. Yo, this is this is powerful, man. This is powerful. You are, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Um, stand if you've been you've ever been in handcuffs, not because you were hooking up, <laughs> right? 
It's like, yeah. Yo, seriously? Yo, hang on. I also just want to note. Looks like there's only two women who are standing. So three, actually. And also, uh, yeah, it's very interesting, man. So you all, okay. So hang on. So stay, remain standing if that, if you've seen the inside or been on the inside of a jail cell. Yeah. Damn. All right. Yo, all right, hang on. Remain standing. Here's what I just thought of. Remain standing if you were on the inside of that jail cell for at least a week. Dude. <laughs> divine. Was it a div <laughs> was the experience divine? No, all right, dude, we'll talk about it later in the semester. All right. I want to hear it. Uh, okay, stand if you're, if you're a hugger. Oh, seriously? Doug, you're a hugger? Dude, hang on. Give me a hug. All right. Okay. Dude. All right. All right, cool. Okay, here you go. You ready? Okay, sit. Um, yeah, that's a lot of people. We should be, like, doing group hugs in here and stuff. Okay, wait, hang on. Stand if you never, just don't, don't like being touched and just never want to be touched. Just for whatever reason. Yo, huggers, just take note, okay? All right, mom. Once again, once again, are you, okay, thanks. Are you guys, look, this is, you, you see what's going on here, right? This is the cross section. So we have, I could just, I could keep reading, I'm going to keep reading because I have some really good ones here. But I could just keep reading. We could just go the entire semester and it's just a cross section of things. There's nothing I could say that would be all people of one group or another group. I mean, this is the nature of this. Stand if you have a, a chronic health condition. Damn. Whoa. Damn, that's, okay. Okay, thanks, man. Um, stand if you are close to someone who's had an abortion. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, and stand... If you've touched a dead human body that was not embalmed. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, okay, here's, this is an interesting one. Uh, we did the alcohol piece, so let's do this one. Stand if you have never smoked marijuana. All right, hang on. That's a lot of people. Seriously? All right, hang on. Remain, yo, rem and remain standing if you want to try. No, remain standing if you if you want to try. All right, hang on. Yo. Those, did you all, those of you those of you who you know got the hook up did you notice right. just today is Bob Marley day we're just trying to spread the love um, okay here's one I wonder uh, this is a kind of a curious one S stand if you've spent more than two consecutive consecutive week and not when you were a, a very very young infant neonatal S stand if you spent more than two consecutive weeks in a hospital. Wow. Man, it's so many people. Okay. Um, thanks. Stand if you have a multiracial, for whatever reason, marriage, adoption, 
um, living in sin, whatever the case is. Uh, if you have a multiracial nuclear family, you consider it to be multiracial. Yo, okay, cool. Yo, that, this, is, it's a lot, this is a lot of people, once again. And you all have different experiences, and we're going to talk about being multiracial. All right, thanks. Um, oh, okay, this is a good one. Stand if, if, there, if there is a common stereotype of your re- racial, religious, or cultural group that you totally fulfill. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. All right. Okay. <laughs> Damn, seriously. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to do a class just on this. All right. We'll just take, pass the mic around. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. So stand if you never, and I mean virtually never, give serious thought to what you look like. Yeah? Yeah, very cool, man. Yeah, yeah very cool. Thanks, man. Um, so, Nobody is currently in the military, right? Because the three guys that were up here the other day, you're all out. No one's currently in the military? Um, how many of you have close family members, like your, your brother, sister, or a parent? Let's just go with brother, sister, or parent, who is currently in the military. Huh? Yeah. Cool. Okay, thanks. Um, So listen, I, uh, I'm just really blown away by this. And one of the things, if you go back to the class from last Thursday, when I did the, the black devils class and did the race switching, um, you can see that I, I can dig right into the inequality stuff pretty deeply. I mean, I taught a course here at Penn State in the um, African Studies Department for, I don't know, 15 years or so, the 400-level class on race inequality. So, I mean, I'm, I can go there very easily. It's just part of my DNA, in a way. It's what I've studied. Um, and that's really important, that we see the differences and we see not only differences, but we also see the inequalities. And once again, going back to that particular class, for those of us in the race or ancestry majority, i.e. white Americans, if things had been reversed, historically, we'd be the ones that want to talk about race a lot because we'd have an experience of inequality that's deeply embedded in our histories. Like if that experience that I talked about was the white experience, white people would be demanding that we talk about race. That's just the nature of it, right? Same with women and men. If, if men really, really, when you really know certain things about the experience, the unequal experience, um, you just would start making demands to talk about it. So it's really important that, we, that we're able to go there and that we do go there. At the same time, it's equally important that we see the ways in which we're all connected and in which we're very similar. Because if we don't see the ways in which we're connected and similar, then we miss out on... Not, I don't, not just building the bridges that we need to build, but actually to having a curious, sustaining our curiosity about other people and who they are and what they are, right? And, you know, a, it's, we're here at, at a university to grow intellectually and socially and psychologically and so on. And a part of that, a big part of that is, is sustaining our curiosity 
And that's part of a big part of what this class is. Like, just sustain it. And follow that, follow the questions about other people. And sit down and talk to other people and engage other people because the world is mostly not as we imagine it is. And it certainly is not how the politicians tell us it is and how the ruling groups tell us it is, how the extreme left says it is, how the extreme right says it is. The people that love Trump get it wrong. The people that hate Trump get it wrong. The sociologists get it wrong. We all get it wrong. The world is much more complex than we can ever imagine. And what I, one thing I, I want to say is the, the more simplistic the explanation for the world, the more wrong it is. Because it's just immensely complex. Which is hard even last class when I'm talking about Afghanistan and I'm just like, oh my God, I can't even begin to really go there. All I want to do is just raise some questions and throw some things out, okay? So, Dude, with this in mind, I talked to Mr. Rashidi. Remember m my friend, Mr. Rashidi, uh, who, once again, my friend from Afghanistan, uh, who is the nicest human being, I really, the kindest, who I've ever met. And I just feel like I want it. He, where he's calling in on his phone now, and we're going to see if we can't make it happen. Hey, Mr. Rashidi, are you there? Hi, Tom. Yes. How are you? How are things? It's okay, thank you. Hey, so, Mr. Rashidi, um, wh where were you when 9-11 happened? As I told you before, I was in the Wait, say that again. Where were you, where were you when 9/11 happened? I was in Iran. You were in Iran. And what did you think? What were you What were you thinking? Like, what were you feeling? What were you yes, uh, it's not just me. Everyone in the world that doesn't that doesn't Three thousand half people were who were innocent to go kill to that situation. Because of that, yeah, everyone in the world was innocent. Just hang on, yo, hang on one second. One of, one of the problems is that uh, we, um, it's really, it's just really hard in this room. We're going to try to do the WhatsApp piece. So Jeff, you do that. In the meantime, I'm going to do, can you put the third, the fourth slide up? No, this one right there. Yep. So listen, I want to do something. And I'm going to need your help. And I'm going to need volunteers. And you're going to have to, we're going to have to do this really fast because I have a lot of things that I want to do. Um, so. You want to try it on your phone? Hey, Mr. Rashidi. All right. Okay, I think you got it. I think we can hear you better. So, so yes, uh, it would be better if we did it with Skype. No, this is good. This is perfect. We can hear you very well. Um, so, listen. Tell us. 
Yeah. What? Yeah, tell yeah, us what you were thinking during 9/11. You know, as I told you before, I was very sad, not just me, everyone beside me, they were very unhappy. I think two or three days before, yeah, in Afghanistan, Ahmad Shal Masood, one of the jihadi leaders, yeah, were killed in a, a suicide bomb attack. Yeah, I was... Uh, during the news every day. It was at the afternoon, 4.30 p.m., when I heard that happened to a plane, yeah, hit, worked, basically killed more than 3,000 innocent people. Everyone was unhappy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you, what do you think if there was a message that you think that Afghans would, the Afghan citizens would send to the American people, just what would it be? Yeah, um, yes, uh, uh, people, they have different uh, ideas, different perspectives, but uh, a lot of people in Afghanistan love all human to me, I never think about religion, uh, any area, any country. I don't have any border be between human. I love all of human who live all over the world. Mm -hmm. I love you. What what you just said was, I love. I don't see any borders in the world. I love humans all over the world. Yeah. Um. Tell us what dreams you yes. have. What? I love Mr. Rashidi. I always, uh, by the way, I always call him Mr. Rashidi because it's just my way of, of showing respect. Tell me what dreams you have for your children. Yeah, I, I love my children be uh, live in a peace condition. Uh, which I have never been to, uh, and also live in a situation that there isn't anyone killed by the name of religion, country, skin, color, or anything else, or any ethnic to kill another one. Yeah, I want them to be in a peace condition. Mm -hmm. Just to live, to live in a peaceful country. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, say, you, so you watch the live stream quite a bit. You very often stay up late watching the live stream. Um, my question is... Yes, it's uh, about one and a half of Gunston. One and a half of It's about three years, I think. I watch all the live streams of social media. You, yes, for three years you've been watching. What is um, what would you like to say to my students? What's yes. yeah? What would you like to yeah, say? Let me tell you, I have studied politics in university. I have studied politics in university, but uh, me sociology was our main. Main subject. This previous class, even I didn't know what sociology means. Yeah, I have learned a lot from this class. Mm -hmm. What else, Mr. Rashidi? What message? What message do you want to send to the United States to Americans about Afghans? Yes, uh, just let me be just Rashidi, not all Afghan people. Maybe they have different perspectives. But uh, I will have all the human beings and uh, all the people who live all over the world. And I love them more. Mm -hmm. Come on.
Tell him to say that again. Hey, say that one more time. Yes, uh, I love all the people who live all over the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I respect any rela- all the religions, all the religions, and who don't believe to any religion. I love, what I love all the human, just this. And also, I love the students who are not. Class. Yeah, thanks. It's nice to have your energy. It's nice to know when you're watching the stream. It's important that people in other places, especially in Afghanistan, because of the way we often think about Afghanistan. Hey, so um, we're going, I'm going to, so keep. Oh, hey, one final question, Mr. Rashidi. What's your favorite television show? Yeah, can you repeat it once again? Yeah, what is, what is your favorite American television show? Yes, uh, I watch news and uh, American TVs. Uh, the best one is CNN, CNBC, NBC, and this uh, TVs. Mm-hmm. And also uh, some shows, some serial film. Uh, I watch some serials like Arrow, Agents of <laughs> Shield, 24. What is it? 24? Some others. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, I'm going to cut off here. So. Just thanks for joining us, Mom. I appreciate it. I send my love, and I I will be in touch. Yeah, thank you. All right, we will talk. Hey, yeah, thanks. You know, sometimes the technology's hard, man. Like, he's, just so you know, just a sense of this. So he lives outside of, of, of Kabul. And he drives them. He works for us. We have a project, and he works for us. And he works. He does has another a job in which he works, um, teaching languages, teaching young children languages, and um, just to develop their interest in the world. And you know, he lives in a in really a dangerous area, and it's very. But you know, he just does what he does and brings his spirit to the world because that's what he does. And I don't know, it's, somet- it's really humbling for me because sometimes my life, I just go through my life and things just happen and I may get frustrated over certain things. But, you know, he gets in his, and, and you know, he's, he goes by car, by bus, and, you know, into some places where he's going. And it's, it can be, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. So, Yo, can I say something quick? Yeah. Um, so Mr. Rashidi, as you guys know, has been coming into the class for a little while, and uh, we're actually Facebook friends. And I was always told, like, after, especially after 9-11, like, how dangerous the Middle East is, and people from Afghanistan are all trying to kill us, and, like, so much hate-mongering. But Mr. Rashidi's actually a friend of mine now. Like, we talk, like, almost, not every day, but me and him, and sometimes the guy you'll meet later, Bossum, like, we talk from the Middle East to, to America. And he's actually more accepting of me as a human being than some of my family members are. And this is the same people who told me to hate him. So, like, mm. if you actually take the time and talk to people from these places, it'll change your freaking life. Yeah. You'll see people in a whole new way, and it will never be the same. Yeah. I second that, man. That's part of what this class is about. Thanks, man. So I want to do one thing. Now I want to talk about differences. And I want to talk about divides. There are deep divides. So if you're not, if you're not out in the world and you're not, if you're not paying attention, um, you know, it's just to other cultures and other people, you might miss some of the divides that exist in the world. And there's some really deep ones. And it's not, so the very first one, African Americans, white Americans, and that was 
the one that I dealt with the other day of, with the, the, the class on, you know, black devils. And, but it goes deep. And these are just some. I could, there could be many others, and maybe some of you, some of you can suggest some. But here's what I want to do. I want to pick out, I want to identify the pivot points of these divides, okay? The points, the key fault line. Why are these two groups at odds? Not everybody in the two groups, but there is a fault line, and I pick them because the fault line exists. Fault line, you know, it's like it's real. And, and why is that? In a very simple way, I'm gonna, I want to invite two people, one person from each one of the sides, to come up. We'll just do it one at a time, and I want to give you the microphone. I want you to explain in 60 seconds, 30 seconds or less if you can, but definitely less than 60 seconds, what you think, what you identify from your perspective, from what you've heard, not from what you believe, okay, from what you've heard and what you know. What is the primary fault line and what are the main or the key, what's the key issue? Maybe there's a couple issues in the conflict. So between African Americans and white Americans, for example, what is the key issue, okay? And that you've heard, like it doesn't mean it's the one you believe, it doesn't mean, you know, you, you get it, right? And so look at those and see if, if you can be a person who can take one side or the other and take the side, mean articulate to the class what the fundamental fault line. And this matters, right? So Pakistanis and Indians, for example, uh, if you understand the geopolitics of the world today and know anything about the proliferation of nuclear weapons, I, for me, from what I understand, I will say, and it's something that I've been dealing with for my whole life, if the end of the world ever happens, if we're going to like have a major catastrophe and it's going to blow up, it's probably going to be between Pakistan and India. It's not going to be in the Middle East. It's going to be Pakistan and India, y'all. Like, this is, like, you may think, like, oh, Pakistanis and Indians. It's like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know anything. I'm like, really? Well, you might want to know something because, in my humble opinion, if the end ever happens, that's where it's going to happen, right? That's where it's going to start. It's going to be the flashpoint and go, right? So, I mean, I could be wrong on that. I don't know. It's all just a guess game. You know what I mean? It's a guessing game, bro, right? So, anyway... Um, these are divides. These are serious. So let's start with the first one. Who can, from the from from African Americans and white people, like what's the like? So what do what's the beef that white people have of African Americans and African Americans? What's the beef, the main beef, the primary beef, the primary divide that African Americans have of white people? Right. So who? Who wants to, who can do that? It's not what you believe. You just got to articulate it. What do you think it is? Who can do it? Yo, man, I'm not doing it. I can do all these, but I'm not doing it. Who can do this? Oh, who's going to do it? Everyone's afraid. Let's, let's get the white person first. This is not your Dude, personal opinion. Dude, it's not opinion. your idea. It's not, this is not what you believe. It's like, what do you, what is your... What does, do you like, you're, you know, like you sit around the dinner table on Labor Day and you're having the picnic and somebody in your family starts talking about, oh, black people again. What are they saying? What's the beef? What's the primary thing that you hear over and over and over again? What is that? And then I need a black person to say, what's your problem with white people, man? What do you hear again and again and again? Who wants to, who's the white person that can articulate that? Who's... We can, I can just come up, we can, okay, come, who's going to be, who's going to take the black side? Who can say it? No, dude, you're not black, bro. <laughs> you were, though, actually. You were for a day, man. Dude, by the way, you were great the other day. No one's ever, dude, you were, you, no one's ever, dude, no one ever was, no white person was ever able to do that. So I really thank you for that. That was cool. White people get, so, white people, you're all so damn uptight, man. I need a black. I need African American. Who can who can articulate it? It's not divine here, because I know he can. Who can articulate it? Who's going to do it? 
What's your beef with white people? What's the beef in the black community with white people? Are you black? You got, I see that. Are you African or are you African-American? Yeah, no, no, you, man. Wait, are you African or African-American? Dude, you're gonna, you're gonna, you were already up there. Dude, who's gonna do it? Who can do it? Well, hang on, let's hear what the white person has. Oh, so what's your name? My name? Yep. I'm Jordan. Jordan. Okay, Jordan, what's the beef? What's the... Yeah, dude, come white people, like... <laughs> Hi, I'm great. <laughs> jo- here's... Okay, what's the beef that white people have? What's the divide? What's the main thing? I think the most common thing is that a lot of Caucasian people, specifically in the United States, is that we're raised based off of this, like, disproportionate distribution of resources so a lot of african americans no hang on hang on i don't want you to go there no you're you're like just you're trying to just you want black people to know like hey i'm i get this shit like this isn't me talking like it's all about this person no no i just say what the beef is dude what's the beef all right well i think black people are seen as being like more impoverished and they like have this grudge over like slavery and everything they've been through because of white people and so white people feel like almost that they're being attacked still even though they're not and it was their own fault in the first place wait hang on hang on you don't have to go there don't go there right too much too much yeah, no i just want to know so white people feel like black people are holding this grudge i and- think white people are afraid of black people a because a lot of them are a lower like lower uh, socioeconomic? socioeconomic class well, that's what white because, people think yes yep. and because of the grudge they feel like they have a reason to fear Got you. Okay, cool. All right. So got that? So I would agree with you. Okay. And okay, now I need a black person. What's your beef with white people? Dude, somebody. Dude, are you black? You look black. (laughs) Who's going to do this? Come on, man. Don't make me do it. Dude. God. All right. What's your name? Robin. 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 What's your name again? Hi. Jordan. I'm Jordan. Hi, Jordan. Okay, Robin, what, what's the beef? Oh, there's a lot of you. So <laughs> I think to boil it down, the belief is that white people or white Americans do not care about black Americans and that in some cases they still specifically want black Americans to fail. So they don't care about black Americans mm-hmm. and black people, do you think one of the divides is that many black people feel like white people just even want black people to fail? They don't even... Yeah. Okay. Any other? Anyone want to add anything to any of these? Because it's really common. We've got to do it fast, though. Like, don't. It's white people. Do you all agree that Jordan nailed it here? Is that it? Do you want to add it? Is there anything else we need to add? No, no. you're black. You can't add to white people, dude. Dude, you're brown. Are you brown or are you white? What's that? Yeah, no. I need a, I need a real white person. Dude. Wait. Hang on. All right, dude. You're going to add something to it? All right, bro. Dude, okay. this is a real white guy right here, pal. All right. Okay, I, Your I'm, stand-up ha- I'm half Hispanic. My mom's Dominican, but my dad's white. Oh, that's okay. the same with him, man. Okay. All right, go ahead. Just but, let uh, you, half of you okay. speak, then. So not me. Not me personally, but like... No, I know dude, don't even say that. Okay. That's not what this is. I know that. White people that I know. White people in general. Yeah, I again. know white people that I know think black people are like lazy. Okay, black people are lazy. Got it. If you weren't lazy, y'all would have... If you weren't lazy, Robin, y'all wouldn't you have a problem. Okay, there's one. Yeah, Jordan, you left that out. Any, any black person want to add something to what Robin said? Yeah, bro. What's your name? Rogers. Rogers with an S? Dude, cool name. All right. Thanks. Dude, is, what's your last name? Don't. Anoha. Oh, yeah? It'd be yeah. cool if it was Rogers. <laughs> you could be R squared. Yeah, right, cool. All right, dude, go ahead. What is it? Here, can you stand up real fast so the camera can pick you up? Yeah. Turn this way. Speak into the camera right there. Uh, I think a lot of white people try to claim stuff as their own. And even though, like, black people started first, they'll take it as their own and try and, like, manipulate on us. Okay. So the idea a lot of black people have is it's like white people appropriate all sorts of stuff, like whether it's rock and roll or country music or whatever, a property or the cotton gin, whatever it would be, right? 
Okay, cool. All right, man. Dude, are we good? Okay, so there's the key divide. And, you know, you see, look, you notice how hard it is for me to even get anyone to talk? So now we're going to do something about race relations. And, like, first off, white people are all just so, we're all like, oh, man, this isn't me, but I just want to say this. And I'm already telling you we know it's not you. And then, you know, with black people, it's, it's, it's a little easier. But white, notice that even black people aren't, like, all raising their hand. Like, yeah, I want to jump in here because I want to take an opportunity to beat up white people for a hot second, right? I'm not seeing that. So it's like I'm tra still trying to pull teeth. You know what I mean? Like, you don't really want to say. Anything else you want to say? Wait, how come you don't want to say it? Why do you think people aren't volunteering to come down and take a shot at white people? <laughs> uh, or just not take a shot. I'm joking. Just actually say it. For one thing, I think it has to do with our age. Like, I think we're all afraid of confrontation. Like, everybody wants to just be really peaceful and really civil, and they're afraid that if they get up here and say, like, to say that this is black people's problem with white people is very general. Nobody wants to throw out a generalization. But Okay. Okay. All right. I got that. Cool. You stay up here, Jordan. You can have a seat. Thanks. Thanks for coming up. Well, now okay. I'm alone. No, you're going to stay up here. Real hot, hot minute. Next one. Okay. I need an African. What's the beef? Here, you can stand, stand out here. What's I have the, no idea. The beef with Africans? I have no idea. Who, all right. Hang, have a seat then. <laughs> Thanks, by the way. I, okay. We're going to do Africans and African Americans. Give me, who's, I need an African, a Nigerian, especially a Nigerian. Yeah, dude, just pretend like you're on Twitter. I need a Nigerian. I need an, an African. Yo, what's your beef? What's your beef? What's, what's the African beef with African Americans, man? Yo, this is like one of these things that black people don't want to like. Sh it's like dirty laundry. You don't. Come on. Come on, can you just say it? It's not what you're, it's not your, are you African? Are you African American? Yo, whoever has the attendance sheets, can you put them in the air? Can we? Oh, I effed up. <laughs> hey, that's why I don't do attendance anymore. <laughs> dude, did you not do attendance? No, because I had them the because. Fuck, dude? <laughs> dude. Can you just get... No, I have them right here. No, you got to get like 12 or 15 of them out, motherfucker. Okay. Dude, come on, man. God damn, dude. All right, here we go. Uh, can we not get the African, African... Do I have to do this? Do you going to let the white guy do it? Like, come on, man. Dude, wait, who raised their hand? Wait, yeah, are you African or African-American? Yo, come down. Or you can stay up there. Who's African? I need an African. Who's going to do it? What's your beef? Can you do it? Can you pass that down to her? You got to turn it on. All right, man, we're going to go fast. Damn, y'all are like... Okay, so, so... So the term African is sometimes used as an insult as like you're dirty and poor and come from like an impoverished country. So when you are from America and someone says you're African, they take that as an insult. So you think that, so the idea here is that you're African American. So one of the beefs, no, the, here's my question. What's the beef you have with Africans? The beef, What's the beef that Africans have with Africans? It's, it's that like when you're being called- Hold it, hold it close. When you're being called African, it's almost an insult because they're saying you're poor, impoverished, and you're uneducated. No, 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 you're missing it. You're talking about white people. I'm talking about what's your beef, what's the beef that African, Amer there's a divide in the African and African American communities. Let's start with the African. What is it that you all say about African Americans? Just turn, the, turn, the, turn it up, push it up. Oh. <laughs> um, Can you stand up real fast? Okay. Okay. I know this isn't you. This is, okay, got it. So you don't have to say a lot of, just what's the essential beat? Um, African Americans don't have culture. I know that's really shady, but like, they lost all their culture from Africa. They kind of lost who they are. And I think it's interesting how you said that. Um, Wait, and so what's the problem with that? Is just, it that they're claiming to be African? Yeah, and they claim really it not? to be African without knowing 
what Africa is about. So the idea is like for many Africans, African Americans claim to have a tie to Africa and don't know anything about Africa, right? Okay, what else? What else? That's it. That's all, that's all the, I've ever heard. It's the, just like there's okay. nothing to them. Okay, got it. So do you do you have any? Do you have something? Go ahead. Hi. Okay. So I feel like in my experience, it's like as an African American, we we do want a culture to claim. We want to be able to be like, oh, we want to find our roots, but it's really hard to do that, even if you take a genealogy test. So we're like, oh, I like am, I have African blood, but actual African people are like no, you're not. Like, they're mad at us for not having a culture, but that's not even our fault. Got you. So you're the other side. The, the problem, the fault line is, would you, would you agree with this? The fault line is, like, dude, y'all are critiquing us for not having a culture and for identifying with Africa, but, like, what are we supposed to do, right? Okay, that would be that side. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else want to add anything? Anyone got it? All right, man. The other side, by the way, the Nigerian side, I just want to throw out there, this idea that if African it's the same thing as white people. If African Americans weren't so lazy, they'd be better off, right? Stop just complaining about shit and move forward. Dude, you didn't want to say that, though, did you? I'm not Nigerian. Oh, yeah, okay. But <laughs> I'm just throwing, I'm throwing Nigerians under the bus. But you've heard that, too, right? Okay, but you didn't want to say it. No. Dude, why not? Be rude. Like Dude, you're not being rude. You're, hang on, can you just take that? Dude, you're not being rude. You're just we're just putting stuff out into the room. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, y'all are too. Here's the problem. You ready? You, you get where we're going here? So y'all are the, you get this generation of people who just want to be really nice until you're in the comfort of the closed room where like, you know, you know how every racist joke starts? Yeah. Every single racist joke starts like this. All right. <laughs> to see who's there and that's like how y'all are right so it's like yeah we're in this group we want to be like kind of nice but like hey, uh, i don't want to really say and, and then you go in the comfort of your confines of your home dude damn every racist joke okay we're gonna go to the next one too bro can we just talk about white people or like white people and hispanics are we going to can we yeah, dude, let's come coming up to that. No, I dude. saw Mexicans. I didn't see Hispanics. That's no, the I, no, here's the reason. Because the divide with Hispanics right here, we're going to talk about it, dude. But I didn't want to hit that today because the divide isn't so intense. But we could do it, though. We could do it. All right, I'll go. Are you Latino? I'm Hispanic. You're Hispanic? Where are you from? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? Ah, oh, dude, Port I know I didn't do the Puerto Rican thing. Okay, we'll do that. Next one, bro. Pakistanis and Indians. What's the... What's the What's the struggle, man? All right. Oh, you're Indian, right? Oh, dude. Yeah, look at you. You're totally Indian. All right. Hang on. You can go to the front real fast. Come on up here. Who's... I need a Pakistani. Dude, Pakistani. All right, bro. What, what's your name? Abbas. What is it? Pasha. Pasha? Yeah. Pasha. What's up, man? You know what this is, bro? Uh, what's your name? So humble. Soham, nice to meet Soham. you. Soham? 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 Yeah. Cool, man. See, now there you go. Yeah, there is no like beef. I don't know why people say it. There is no beef. What's is the no divide? Beef. There is no divide. There's just a border, and like people are same all across. There is oh, no divide. God. It's just fucking politics that's screwing shit over. Otherwise, I mean, there is no divide. Actually, there's nothing. Wait, hang on, hang on. Yeah, there's literally nothing. It's just politicians. Like, they're... Screwing people up, basically. Get, getting in their heads yeah. and like getting to yeah, It's new, all about the, the propaganda, news. basically. Dude, hang on. Just, I just want to do something real fast. Can you, uh -huh. Green, can you like get these guys? They, you look like, you look like. Yeah, we do look alike. Look the same. Yeah, same glasses, bro. You call Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> these dude. Indians trying to copy Pakistanis. No, this is yeah, not that's fair. That's not going to happen. <laughs> nah, dude. All right. So wait, when I asked, are you a hugger, did you stand up? But I'm a hugger. Come on. You heard? I'm All right. My dude. Indian brother. All right. All right, dude. All right, dude. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Got it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. God. Oh, my God. World peace right here in 100 dollars. Okay, next one. Uh, Mexicans and nativists. Dude, we're going to go there. Okay? I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to pass this one up because we're going to spend a lot of time on it. Go to the next one, man. Sunnis and Shias. 
Dude, Sunni, right here. We need a Shia. Are you Shia? You're Shia? Oh, damn. All right, bro. Come back up. Yo. Mudar. Mudar. Remember Mudar? Got him. Of course. By the way, this is this guy, Mudar, the reason I brought him up the other day is because the moment I met him, I'm like, God, you're just like my friend Mr. Rashidi. Like, you're just such a nice guy. I can tell. Like, I need a, I need a Sunni. Who's a Sunni? What's the, what's the struggle, man? I need a Sunni, somebody. Dudes. You, yo, go, wait, are you Sunni? Oh, dude, all right. You didn't know that? Nah, I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't know that. I thought, yeah, I guess you, I would know you're Sunni. Okay, what's the, what's the conflict, bro? We'll start with the Shia. Um, I guess it's like, every, like each side thinks uh, the others as the imposter and the, not the wrong successor for, the, for Islam. Okay. So, wait, hang on. I'm going to help you all out. So, Islam, you know how in Christianity the fundamental division has been between Catholics and Protestants? And Protestantism is a sect that broke off. It's like broke off from the Catholic Church, okay? In Islam, the same thing happened. Sunnis and Shias split. What, do, what would you argue is the essential so divide? What, um, so after the prophet died, he did not like name a proper successor. Yep. Sorry. So after prophet Muhammad died, he did not name a proper successor, which we can find in the books. So the Shias believe that the proper successor for Muhammad would be his um, daughter's husband, which was Ali. And they believe that he was the right man to take over at that time. What Sunnis believe is that his closest friend at the time, Abu Bakr, he was supposed to be the, prof uh, the successor of the prophet. And if you look back at history, Abu Bakr became the successor of the prophet and then came two others and then came Ali. So that's why we think that she has enraged that why did Ali became the last one when he should have become the first one. Uh, I got, so that's what the whole division, that's what, dude, that's what y'all are killing each other about is that yeah. right there. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Just who got to succeed the prophet Muhammad Peace be upon him. That's it? Ah, oh, damn, man. Okay. Okay, thanks, dude. All right. Got it. Okay. Wait, wait. That's Hamza, by the way. All right. Thanks, man. Next one. Jews and Palestinians. Are you Palestinian? Dude. All right. Come on up. Jewish. Come on. What's your name, bro? Khalid. What is it? Khalid. Khalid? Khalid? What's your name, bro? Jason. Jason. All right, Jason. Khalid. All right, Jason, you start, man. What's, what's, the, what's the deal, man? I think it's uh, more appropriately Israelis, maybe. But yeah, okay, like, Israelis. Yeah, yeah, I should put, I could put Israelis, but yeah. well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw, I'm going to keep it as Jews because even though I recognize, yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay. Um, I, it's just like... Uh, the argument of who was there in Israel first and sort of who has the right to the land. Um, and people just, and at this point, it's more like who's more violent and who's doing the wrong thing during the current conflict. Got you. Okay. And bro. Yeah, I'd agree with the second part a little bit more. Like right now, basically, like I live with like a, my whole family's Palestinian and everything. So like basically every day, every dinner we ever have is just shitting on Israelis. And it's like, it's like, oh, like they're kicking not us literally. out of our home. Like, of course, you're not literally shitting on them, but like, you know, like it's like they're just like, oh, like Israelis are coming into our home, like kicking us out of our own homes, killing all of us. Like, if you've ever been to Palestine, it's just like checkpoint after checkpoint after checkpoint. I got stopped like every now and then, and like I wouldn't be able to like go in from one area to the other. So the divide is that Israelis came and took the land, took over the land. Yeah, by We're force. Where you were living. Yeah, like a lot of Palestinians, the usual argument is that if they came in peacefully, there would have been no problems. Okay, and you all, who, why did you come back to the land anyway? It was one of those things where they, 
they found a place and it was given by this person and assigned by that person. Uh, well, that person was like God, right? Yeah, it was God. It was God, but then also in like the 60s, it was established. Yeah, but, yeah. So it's sort it's of It kind of started before World War II with the Zionists and the British. Dude, it just like goes, all right, here we go. So here's what we got to do, right? Yeah, it's like you could just go forever. I mean, like if you really want to go like through the history and everything. Dude, I can like, go back was... to like day negative yeah. 12,000, right? Yeah, like... Dude, can you... Are you a hugger, dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you guys oh, just... Yeah. You can do it. All right. All right. I wasn't able to be a smack. <laughs> dude, just do one thing. Yeah. Just do one thing. You just say the word Palestine. Palestine. Say the word Israel. Israel. Okay, good. All right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, thanks. All right, next one. Oh, wait. Jews and Christians. Are you Christian? Jewish? Can we get a Christian up here? I need like a real, a real Christian, like hardcore. <laughs> Dude. Uh. Dude. Dude, you're the man. Seriously? Oh, dude. Oh, dude! Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Dude, look at it. No, I'll put it right in that camera right there. Look, we got. Wait, hang on, hang on. We got this. Dude, this is fucking. This is it, dog. All right, what's the what's the beef that Christians have with Jews? So basically, um. <laughs> wait, James got it first. He got it first. Got to do it fast though. Got, I think. Hang on, hang on. All right, all right. So Jews read like three quarters of the Bible, and then Catholics and Chris I'm Catholic, but I'm Christian. Um, Dude, hang on. There's actually a lot. We're going to come to that. That's actually a question. All right, so, and, they, and then the interpretations of the New Testament is where the Catholics go crazy, all right? But, um, <laughs> all right. But so they read the Old Testament, which is, starts with Genesis. I won't, I won't open this. But um, I'll help you. Oh, out, we could read the Bible for days. The last letter is the letter of James, by the way. Um, <laughs> is he wait is that white james or black james it's actually <laughs> it's just james we don't have colors attached to our names all right <laughs> all right just dude. saying just saying all right dude and what's the yeah, jewish what's the right, beef right, with christians I, I have a, do you believe this, this is a line from my friend do you guys believe that god is perfect is he perfect relatively of course so why do you feel the need to make a new testament oh, hey, hey, hey. because oh wait shit Sorry. <laughs> Dude. Damn, dog. Because God, uh, because damn. God had a son, and He named him Jesus. Jesus was Jewish, by the way. Yes, and it was know. His son. Oh, dog. All right, Can't convert on, back. On. All right, hang on. All right, dude, hang on. Wait, stay down here. You guys, get, you're gonna have to hug now. You gotta hug again. All right, thanks, dude. All right. By the way, I'll come back down for Christians. All right. you keep this. This dude, no, I have a, I have one in the back. I'm sure you do. No, no, dude, I have one in the back. Yeah. He has this one of every this one text in the back. Who wants this? No, I have one in you the back. You have every type of text in the back for religious scholarship. What's that? Can I go sit? Oh yeah, go ahead, have a sit. Now. Dude, he's had, prophesying you know, the good name of the Lord. Just. Yo, just like Christians, always proselytizing and stuff, man. God, any chance to get a convert. All right, you could have Jeff, by the way. Yo, by the way, White Mike, or James, James. White James. Yo, I should, can I, can you I do the next one by Jeff myself? If y'all Christians didn't kick him off for being gay, you know what I mean? He'd still be a Christian, so like, whatever. Yo, Jesus, can, I, can, I do, can I do the next one by myself? Do both Japanese of them? and Koreans? No, the next one. <laughs> yeah, what's the next one? Oh yeah, all right. Nah, we're gonna have to let's let's go to, to go to this one. I need a Muslim or a Christian. What's your problem with gay people, y'all? Right? Do you got that one? Wait. Go ahead, dude. What's the, what's the problem? Can just stand up so we can see you in them. Right there. <laughs> Look right into that camera. I, uh... What's the problem y'all have with gay people? Uh, according to the Bible, it says that a man should only be with a woman and not with another man. 
Wait, that what? What is that? A man should only be with a woman. You mean be with like sexual? Married, sexual. All right, dude. What's the problem? What's the issue? Oh, uh, okay. So back in the Old Testament, oh, the original God, thing. So the, in the Torah, the first four books of the Bible, there are six mentions of homosexuality. Jesus himself actually never mentions homosexuality, not once. Actually, also. Jews don't believe in, uh, well, the original ones, don't believe in a hell. So therefore, the six mentions in the Bible, uh, there's no hell. Dude, wait, hang on. Are you trying? Okay. What I'm trying to say is gay people have no problem with Christians until Christians kick them out of their church. All right. Okay. So that's the like problem. So gay, so gay people, the divide is just that being excommunicated for things that other people do anyway for being yourself and loving who you want to okay and the, right and the, okay. and the christian church is like no we want you to follow these particular rules because of control dude okay first off are the attendance sheets no, hang on hang on so yo are the I'm not Lauren, saying you are you watching the attendance sheets my friend where are they did they get around who hasn't signed an attendance sheet? Dude, can you, like, keep them going? No, dude. No, 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 motherfucker. No. Pat, where's the atten where are the attendance sheets? Can you keep passing them? Lauren, can you move on this and help out a little bit, pal? What the fuck? Can you get some more? Is that an attendance sheet? Are you done with it? Can you, like, could you, like, take it up to the top, maybe? Is there another attendance sheet somewhere that you're done with? Are they going around still? Can you just take it up to the top? Dude, like, seriously. Fuck, man. Who hasn't signed yet? God damn it. Dude, fucking pissed. Yo, worst case scenario, if you don't sign it, we're gonna have a bunch up here. Just come up and sign them. All right, y'all. Just, yo, we, we'll have some at the top and at the bottom. Yo, here's, I, here's a couple of attendance sheets down here.